And as the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. John is 13, 1 to 5. In the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zora, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive. Thou sh will maybe conceive. Shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of Philist the Philistines. Yeah. Praise God. When I ask us to rose green, come back here and give us our prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank the Lord for your word. Your word is already anointed. And we ask the dear for Lord to anoint your man servant. Let self be slain in the name of Jesus. Let no flesh glory in your presence. But God, we ask you to unctionize him and anoint him, sanctify him for your purpose, Lord. Speak through him to speak to our people in the name of Jesus. Touch the hearts of your people, Lord, that they be receptive, open their minds, that they will understand the word, oh God, and turn and change and grow and be fed in the mighty name of Jesus. God, exalt yourself and show yourself strong in this house today, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. When a woman is barren, and especially in those days, it is seen as a very serious condition. And it is indeed a serious condition to be barren. Because if all women who are born were barren, the creation would not have been extended beyond Eve because she being barren would not be able to conceive a child in her womb. Barrenness took a, a stronger negative meaning in certain societies and especially with Israel. You are no good. You are a curse. We see an example of Penina who could have conceived and Hannah who could not conceive. The woman already felt deserted in as much as her husband was with her and supported her in her barrenness because after all she is human. She will feel left out. Irrespective of how close you are to me, give me children lest I die. In this salvation, Jesus dwells with us. But we pray and cry unto him, Lord, as we witness to others, give us children lest we die. We are not satisfied to see our altars looking blank. Give us children lest we die. We are not satisfied with our spiritual growth and maturity in Christ so long as we can't produce children, Pastor. So this woman in Judges 13 also found herself in this situation. 
thou art barren and bearest not. The Lord has a way of visiting you in your special circumstance. Because he's a special God who specializes in things that are impossible. Amen. So when you take the impossibility to God and you present the word impossible to him, he has a way of taking his dust off and wiping out the first two letters, I and M. Possible. Impossibility is a word that contains the word possibility. The word disadvantage is a longer word than the word advantage. But it carries the word advantage. So when you are in a disadvantaged situation and you take it to Jesus, you write the word disadvantage on the board and say, Lord, that's my problem. He takes his divine dust up and removes the D-I-S and hand you back the word and say, go your peace. You are made whole. So the Lord visited this couple, Zora, of the family of the Danites, whose, Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not, and she swore that a time would never come when she would conceive. So she thought. But when it comes to purpose, God directs his vehicle in any and in every avenue. Yes, yes. He does not necessarily direct it where the womb is fruitful. But he makes sure dedicated. He called the Hukushima Hazangahara. Where things are hopeless. Amen. There is a Samson that I was bring into being. So the Lord makes a promise. Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. In other words, you cannot be drunken in New Testament terms, but drunken how? On the day of Pentecost, they were drunken without any alcoholic bottle being in their lids. They were drunken to the things of this world. They were drunken in the spirit. They thought that they were filled with the new wine. But Peter said, these are not drunken as he supposed. Seeing that it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, said God, I will pour out mighty God in Christ, of my spirit, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Upon my handmaids and my servants will I pour out 
in those days of my spirit. Amen. And they shall prophesy. Amen. So we have news for the world that we are drunk every single day. But after a God resort, Eli thought Hannah was drunk. But she was drunk except after a God resort. So Hannah, in her mind, may have said, Yes, I am drunk. But not Eli, as you suppose. And Eli, you should know better than that. Evidently, you are a backslidden high priest. It's no wonder that you fell backward, broke your neck, and died. When you corrected not your sons, Hophni and Phineas, for their adulterous behavior in the temple. No, in the fullness of time. Let me read some more. And even if any unclean things were low, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and more than shall come on his head, for the child shall be another right unto God unto, from the womb, and he shall be given to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Purpose came to be. Purpose from barrenness. God can make things out of nothing. Genesis 1 is filled with that. In the beginning, God created and it came. In the beginning, this and it came to be. In the beginning, that and it came to be. He looked at the simple dust. And formed man from the dust of the ground, and man became a living soul. Amen. Lesson number one God uses simple things. The Lord spot on the ground, made the saliva clay, wrapped it in the man's eyes, and sent him on his way seeing. Simple things. Moses, what is that in your hand? Look before you. The Red Sea. Fear on his army is coming. But fear not. Stretch forth the word. Praise God. The word of God is sharp. Quicker than the two of the sword. Dividing what? A sunder of the soul and spirit. And is a discerner of them. The heart and the intent of the heart. So he stretched for the word. The seed was divided. Hither and thither. Israel marched forward now in victory. in victory. Victory is mine. Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. How does the song go? I told Satan, get in the hand. Victory today. Victory today is mine. So the enemy is coming behind. But God says go in the direction of the word. The word says this. We can't look that way. So when Jesus says thou shalt not. And you say I shall. You are going opposite to what the word says. Amen. Forward still. Jehovah's will. In Jehovah's will. Go back to the trial. Right. Go through your Red Sea. Yeah. The Lord will part the way for you. Yeah. You shall.
just sworn in go forth on dry ground. So Israel cross the Red Sea. The enemies now came. And as soon as the last one entered within the pyramids of the crossing, Moses, what is that in your hand? Stretch for the word. Because the word that gave life is the same word that will now kill. I put in your hand or in your tongue the power of life and death. So Israel found the person on the right side of the world. But Pharaoh and his army found themselves on the wrong side of the world. So the world that they fought against is the same world that slew them. Praise God. We are going back to, to Samson. Where God uses simple things. Now let us look at verse 25. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Estoria. Now the Bible says that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. But there was a problem that I am having with Samson and it is he never valued spiritual matters the way he should. He knew what the law said. Don't marry yeah. a heathen. Right. His parents tried to dissuade him from that direction. Right. But Samson did not care. Yeah. She pleased me well. Yeah. Give her to me. Yeah. But somehow he was led by carnal eyes. Yes. So in the fullness of time, the Lord had to prepare a different pair of eyes for Samson. Yes. But first, the enemy has got to remove the carnal eyes yes. in order for him to see clearly. Yes. We can't afford to lie in the lap of the liar. Without the consequence. She's not going to hurt you right away. She's going to use her hand and roll on your face. She's going to stroke your head and stroke out the very word of God that when she's through with you, you are nothing good but to be handed over to the devil and Satan. The time came when she pressed upon him daily. Yes. Tell me the secret yes. of your strength. Yes. Hand not, touch not, pierce not. Don't bring Satan in your bed. He will steal it with sin. Yes. You can't lie in bed with him. Yes. Praise God. When you lie and correlate with him, he will produce and give and produce more after his time. So more you have in your house is the more evil and iniquity and wantonness 
multiply more and more and more. So use the sword of the Spirit. Call out of the name of Jesus. Get out of the house in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. That's lesson number two from the life of Samson. The Lord must have told Samson, remember, keep the secret. I have given you an anointing that is functional through the length of your hair. Do not associate with the heathen. Keep this a secret. But when we are mingled with the wicked one, you compromise your stand. When she got his head on her lap and began to romantically squeeze those bumps, shampoo his head, massage him with the best massage oil with those romantic ginger fingers, with those unspeakable tall nails. At some point, she had to give, he had to give in when he could resist no longer. Sadly, he told her all his heart. But the Lord would not allow this to become his permanent downfall. So the Lord miraculously tripped in and caused Jezebel to miss the vision. What she trimmed was the locks. She didn't get the revelation that the strength is not in the locks, it's in the length of the hair. No wonder when the fullness of time came, when the hair began to grow, they didn't really think it because they were thinking of the loss. So the Lord has to preserve his secret. Because the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Hallelujah. Samson feared God. Amen. But he had a spiritual weakness of the world the flesh and the devil and the Lord had to take him out of that spiritual condition. So, he shook himself at times. Wish not that the Spirit of God had departed from him. It is not in the shape it is in the shape of the Holy Ghost when he moves through you. Yes. Amen. Solomon lost, Samson lost the inward shape out. Yes. And he adopted the outward shape in. Yes. The songwriter said something on the inside yes. is working on the outside. Yes. Oh, what a change in my life. Yes. And he's not going to get a rude awakening. When the Lord allowed the enemies to take his eyes out. Yes. This is interesting. Let us read again. Yes. Praise God. Let us look at chapter 16. We're going to look first at say verse 3. I'm going to backtrack a bit a little. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight. This was before his eyes were blocked out. And put the doors of the gate of the city and the two poles and went away with them. Bar and all. And put them upon shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill. That is before Hebron. Now when you look at Samson, 
more than likely he looked like someone perhaps like me or like pastor. If he looked like he had around 400 pounds of muscle on him, we could say possibly his genetic makeup caused him to be able to lift up those from the post. But you see a man my parents take up a big country post feeling like that is Bible lift up on his shoulder and begin to walk. That's not normal. And that is why they have to send a Delilah in his life to weak him. And she got to where the end. The weakest link was. And she worked on it. She got the southern iron. And she separated it. And he compromised his strength. And in time, he lost his eyes. No. Samson was led away into the camp of Philistia. And in the fullness of time, they were having their feast. And they said, let us bring some snows. Let us make sport with him. And Samson must have prayed to the Lord. He experienced a great revival without his colonizers. I don't need to colonize anymore. I don't regret that the enemy took them away. I now have a revival in my soul. The Lord has given me spiritual eyes and I am now seeing clearly. And now you are going to use me to fulfill my purpose. I thank you Lord for hiding from them the revelation of the land. The secrets which he kept from them. So when the feast came, they sent for Samson and they had him close to the post. And he prayed one final prayer to the Lord. I think it's in chapter 16. Verse, but before he prayed his prayer, there was a lad that lay. The lad, I don't know who young what boy was, but I would say that he represents humility. Samson walked on his pump and he walked on his pride. The Lord brought him low and taught him humility. So humility led him by the way and led him to the post column of victory. Because victory belongs to the child of God who now experiences a revival in Christ Jesus. So he called on the child to lead him to the post. Oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson came a revived worshiper. He was once a worshiper according to the flesh, but he was now a worshiper according to the Spirit. He now focuses on God the way he should. We may not know some of the words of worship that he gave the Lord that may not be recorded, but some of them may be recorded as follows in New Testament language. Lord Jesus, the Lord Rock, 
You are the sword. You are the shield. You are the wheel in the middle of the wheel. You are our provider. Comforter. Rock. Rock of ages. Stone. King of kings. Lord of lords. Son of man. Son of God. Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty Lord. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. He's giving the Lord worship while he prayed. He was not a man of belief in prayer, but he intermingled it with thanksgiving and worship. Lord, you are Emmanuel, the great I am, the Father. You are the Son. You are the Holy Ghost. Zion's righteous governor. The first and the last. The King of all ages, yes. Savior, Redeemer, yes. the Giver of life, yes. life Himself, yes. Resurrection of and the life, yes. the Bread of life, yes. the Water of life, yes. the Fountain of Living Water, yes. Keeper of all souls. Hallelujah. Bishop of our souls, the advocates, the high priest, the high priest, the lamb, the devil's number one fear, the devil's defeater, the captain of our salvation, the shepherd, the sheepfold, our husband.
He was a fitter at Calvary. He was a fitter in death. He was a fitter in his burial. When he went down into the heart of the earth, the Bible says he led captive to the captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So during his burial, he went down into Satan's prison house. He saw Samson. He saw David. He saw Solomon. He saw Adam. He saw Elisha. Praise God. Hallelujah. He saw all in the Messianic lineage. On the Satan's bondage. Spiritual death. Sugar, baby, 
Holy Ghost. All flesh. Praise God. And they were pressing their hearts. And set up the Peter. And to the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren. What shall we do? To be saved. He's going to tell them what it is. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost this plan of salvation but who's many they don't know who Jesus is brother prefer do it the real Jesus sent not knowing that you can only obey Jesus by listening to Peter. You go to Jesus to hear it from him. Jesus is showing his hand the hands. I don't have the keys. I can't open the door. Go to Peter. So do everything in the name of Jesus. The heal in Jesus' name. The prophesy in Jesus' name. The perform miracles, including raising the dead, in Jesus' name. But when it comes to water baptism, they are at enmity with the name. We've got to obey the gospel in its entirety. Praise God. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember today the lesson from Solomon. God uses simple things. Remember the lesson of Sam's brother. Simple things. Keep steadfast in the faith. Be unmovable. Persevere. Don't watch her spiritual barrenness. If you're, we are all barren one way or the other, something in us is not, all, not always produced. But God will come through for you in the, in the fullness of time. Praise God. We are all spiritual honors. Just get to the temple and open our mouths and praise God. Pray to God. That we are seen Hallelujah. and think that we are drunk in. That's all right. We are drunk, but not according to what they want to think. But we are drunken for God's heart. Those who are not in the kingdom, what you say? When you say it's your time, baptized and not filled, it's your time. It's your time. It's time to seek the Lord. Don't let the rapture come and find you, sorry. Time to receive the Spirit. If you believe God with all your hearts, He will bless you. The Lord will bless you and add His mercy on His word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. If something in our natural eyes have led us contrary to the direction that the Lord wanted us to go, if we end up in the wrong place, 
wrong position and we became weak because the enemy have robbed us. Today is the golden opportunity that we can come back to the Lord. Find the altar. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Allow him to give us new vision that is not contrary, that is not fleshy, to lead us in the wrong direction. Let us ask the Lord. Lord, give me new sight, new vision. Show me the new pathway.